Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Diane Willock, Customer Success Coach here at Supermoms in the U.S. Joined again by Maria Stanford, Customer Success Coach in uh, the U.K. And today we are going to be talking about career changing and really just, you know, giving our tips and talking about um, if you're thinking about changing careers, what are some uh, steps that you can put into place to help you out? Where do you even start? So we're, you know, we're going to talk about our own experiences, really, and also just talk about some some action items that you can take if you're considering a career shift. So um, welcome. And again, if you have any comments or any questions, we're here to answer them live, or we can always go back and answer those questions after the broadcast. So definitely feel free to, to add to our comments there or talk to us live. So hi, Maria. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Oh, isn't this nice to be able to talk about kind of, you know, how you do that transition? And I know that we were just chatting before, Diane. Um, and, you know, I've had lots of different transitions in my career. So mm -hmm. many in so many different um, industries. Um, so many different, um, you know, so many different roles. Um, and I do, you know, I'm a lover of change like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that sometimes when you're looking to do that career transition, um, whether that's in your control, actually, or out of your control, because sometimes it's not always within our control that career change, you know, when you think right. about redundancies and things like this, um, you know, when you start to to look at that transition, I think that reflection piece is really important, mm -hmm. isn't it, about who you are, who you want to be in a brand new chapter, what things do you want to leave behind, I mm -hmm. think is really important. You know, sometimes we take all of our baggage with us, don't we? And we tend to kind of sway towards the same roles again. And I kind of think, you know, it does take quite a bit of reflection to kind of go, do I just want to jump out of the pan and back into the fire? Or do I actually really want to explore something different and meaningful and, you know, and that's something that meets our value pillars, really? Yeah, I think that's a, a good point, Maria, because the first step should really be um, that reflection piece, right? To understand, um, especially if you're thinking of that career shift, what is making you, um, you know, want to do that career shift, right? What are your motivations? What do you hope to achieve when you're doing that career shift? I think it's easy to get caught up in uh, the world of, you know, maybe you see what your friends are doing, your associates are doing, everybody on the outside is doing, you think, oh, maybe I want to do that. Maybe I want to move to this career, or maybe that's a direction I should go. But you have to think about it in your own terms, right? Personalize it for yourself, have that self-reflection, and understand what you want out of your first move. So it's not something that you should just jump into. It really isn't something that you should just jump into. You should really be clear on your motivations for for moving in that direction and making that career shift. We talk about you've been through a lot of career shifts. I've been through a lot of career shifts too. And I think what the first piece of advice that I can say in the first tip and where I started was, again, thinking about where do I really want to go? And you know, we all have things in our life um, that change as we go through a career, new interests, you know, um, new areas that we want to go to. So you really have to think about, you know, what has shifted from, you know, my experience before to now, like, what do I want to do now? Um, what are my new interests? What are my new goals? Take an assessment of yourself, figure out, you know, what wasn't working before, what wasn't making you satisfied and figure out what's going to make you motivated and what's going to make you satisfied in a new role or a new career. So you have to, you have to do that self-reflection piece before you can just jump right in. So I think that's really important. Um, this is great. We have some people <laughs> commenting already, which is great. Um, and talking about career shifts. Um, you know, and it's possible to really make these advanced career shifts. But again, knowing yourself and what you're going to be satisfied with and what you're going to enjoy in your new career is really important to start off with. And it's yeah. never too late. We talk about that all the time. It's yes. never too late. You know, yeah. you, you, you're going to go through a lot of career shifts in your life anyway, but don't ever think that, you know, oh, I'm set in my ways. I mean, that's where we get in trouble, right? Where we're thinking of that static 
uh, mentality. That's what I used to, call, you know, like to call it. It's a static mentality. I can only do this. I can't do that. You know, telling ourselves that we can't, or you're stuck in, <clears throat> you know, a box. Whereas if you have that learner's mindset, uh, you know, you can continue to learn, you can continue to shift and you can continue to change. So it's really about your mindset. Don't, don't be put in that box. Don't put yourself in that box. Don't put yourself in that static mindset. Make sure that you're constantly keeping that learner's mindset and that you can always, you know, add on new skills and you can always switch, you know, switch directions if you want to. Absolutely. And I think that's something that I get asked all the time. Am I too old? Am I too old to make the transition to do the change? Because sometimes we want to stay in that comfort zone. So mm -hmm. actually that change is just a little bit too far out of our comfort zone to kind of go, oh, actually, yeah, I'm going to go for it. So we kind mm -hmm. of put up these obstacles, don't we, of right. age or skills or, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things. But I'm pretty sure, and I'm not too sure where I've read this or heard this, but I'm pretty sure there was somebody who was 70 who certified in sales. 75. Yeah, we just read about that. What was the oldest, I think, person that had gone through yeah. and become a certified mm -hmm. administrator? Administrator, and I want to say they were either 70 or 75, I want to say. Yeah, they're definitely, they were definitely in their 70s, right? Mm -hmm. And I, right. I kind of think when people ask this question, I always try and, you know, always try to explore what they've done before because mm -hmm. – Age is our superpower. So I can see um, Laura and Mel obviously talking about their young sons kind of on Salesforce and mm -hmm. that gratification of kind of getting badges and learning and they're, you know, they're eager. And But actually my son's the same, you know, he's 18. Um, mm -hmm. But as an older, mature professional myself, you know, <laughs> we come with lots of experience. Right. And, right. you know, the the young professionals that are just starting out, they're just they're just learning all of those skills. Mm -hmm. You know, they're testing the waters. They're kind of building all of those um, softer skills, aren't they, as they enter the workplace? Mm -hmm. Whereas when we become a certain age, we've mm -hmm. got all of these wonderful gifts that I kind of call our superpowers that right. takes years and years and years of experience years of experience right. build up and I to just, be able to nurture to, right just being able to understand how to navigate you know because you've had that experience and if you you just don't have that experience um you know just in the business world in life in general um you know we've learned through maybe mistakes and failures how to navigate um, and how to deal with those with those failures and move on. And you're right. Sometimes in the younger generation, you know, those are the skills that they might be lacking, but which comes with experience. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, you know, we have all kinds of other skills that are valuable to employers and valuable, you know, valuable to certain roles. So don't think you're too old. Um, to shift and, and career change. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, this is uh, Laura mentioned that she has a, a, a friend that's a nurse. And I can tell you, Laura, just just to let you know that but that's probably, I would say, at least in the U.S. here, uh, the number one or two um, profession that I see and I taught when I talk to people about shifting over to Salesforce. Um, they're either maybe in an educational sector or they're in the healthcare sector. So she wouldn't be alone because there's a lot of people that are shifting and there's such valuable skills, obviously, that an intensive care nurse would have um, that they bring to the table in the Salesforce learning and in Salesforce roles that they have great transferable skills. Yeah. And especially if she has experience in a particular industry, she can become niche in health cloud and, um, you know, be employed in in that same industry, but just as a Salesforce expert. So, yeah, tell your <laughs> tell your friend that it's a great career shift or great, great career move that she should be thinking of. So, yeah, yeah. so great. Sometimes we inherit um, roles, don't we, or careers? You know, we kind of, we might, you know, I remember coaching um, a lady who come from a, a line of um, lawyers, you know, all of her mm -hmm. family were lawyers before her. And that was just the natural step for her to want to go. And, you know, it, it was kind of like that pressure almost, you know, of kind of going, right, you know, you've got to go and 
you've got to go and you know do this next step but actually as she did start to go through her career and was very unhappy around that kind of pace and, and what she was doing she started to explore a career change and you know mm -hmm. she ended up transitioning into something that she loved you know mm -hmm. absolutely loved and literally every day would wake up happy going and and doing her new role and I think sometimes there's also that isn't there we kind of inherit we almost land in a role sometimes or right we don't right. necessarily forge that path ourselves these opportunities just pop up and that then forms our career path and we're kind of here and and perhaps that wasn't even what we thought we would be doing you know so yeah, I think it's really good to sort of explore a career change at any time and just make sure that you're utilizing all of those skills that you have um, mm -hmm. and that you're happy. And, you know, you bring up another good point, because um, in part of my career shift, um, I actually did. Um, I actually did develop a role for myself, you know, kind of um, implemented a role for myself and I shifted into a new role kind of based on my interests. And that's possible to do too. So if you're finding yourself in a position where you you like your organization, but maybe you've lost, you know, your motivation for your current role. Um, you know, we talk to people all the time. Um, one of the, you know, I guess questions I ask individuals if they're looking for Salesforce training, but they're working full time, and I'm sure you do this too, is, is there a possibility at your organization, if you like your organization, can you shift into a Salesforce role in your organization? So don't, you know, don't put that past yourself as well. If you're looking to make that career shift, you could already have it maybe, right? Sitting there in your lap. Yes. Um, and maybe you just have to add on those skills and that technical knowledge and, you know, go through the training. So it's worth a discussion because if you find yourself thinking about, you know, I want to make this career shift, what's going to make me happy? It might not always be leaving your organization is going to make you happy. Yeah. Maybe you like that, you know, who you work for, you like their mission, you like your manager, you like, you know, the business. Think about, is there a role though that I could, you know, move into? And do I just need the training and the skills? And oftentimes if you do just need the training and skills, they might be willing to um, financially um, put you through that training and skills and also accept you into that position because you already know their business and you've been a good worker and a good employee. So that's another area to think about when you're, you know, you're career shifting. Um, maybe yeah. you're a volunteer somewhere and for an organization, but, and you really love the organization, but you're seeing that they have a need for something. So again, you know, look at those areas that are closest to you. That's, you know, making you happy, those that you're interested in and you enjoy doing, there could possibly be a role or, um, you know, a career in that, you know, in that, in that organization that you could fit into easily. So just ways to think about it as you're, as you're contemplating your career shift. Yeah. And I think the one thing that I do love about that Salesforce ecosystem, certainly from a corporate background, is that career growth, right? You know, you can very much um, grow quite quickly and quite rapidly within that ecosystem, can't you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and progress and get that career progression. And sometimes that takes a long time, doesn't it? With within kind of a normal corporate setting. Mm -hmm. um, but that really excites me about the Salesforce ecosystem. And I find, you know, when I first joined, I kind of thought, gosh, I wonder, you know, this can't be real, right? Mm -hmm. This is, there's got to be a catch here because where is all this growth and all of these amazing kind of career opportunities coming from? Um, but it is fast, isn't it? The kind of different opportunities. It's not, you don't have to stay in one role, um, right. mm -hmm. you know, throughout your Salesforce career. It is about that real, um, the emphasis is really on that learning piece, isn't it? And growing mm -hmm. and developing and having that career development. Right. As you get more experience, you kind of learn where your niche might be. Um, you can always niche in, in certain Salesforce products. You can niche in industries. Um, you, you can niche yourself as far as um, the roles that you play, um, you know, within the Salesforce ecosystem. You can learn about all the partners that Salesforce works, you know, with and you can niche yourself in their products and learn more about that. So there's a lot of areas that you can specialize in and move up. Um, and on average, I think that the fluidity of, of a lot of the roles, most people will move on average, I think, 
within a two year time span, right? So they're mm-hmm. quickly moving up, moving to different roles. Some even before that, you know, we've heard stories of people going from Salesforce administrator all the way up to like architect, right? Um, within a year, you know, so they can move through those roles quickly too, depending on how motivated you are. So, you know, it's all up to you, but I do like the fact that there's constantly new products, there's constantly new technology, there's con- con- constantly new organizations and businesses that, you know, add on Salesforce. So there's a lot of area at, for you to move around and a lot of area for and room for growth. So that is, uh, you know, um, sometimes we just get stuck, right? We get stuck in our mm-hmm. position and we feel like we just haven't done anything new. Well, you don't have to worry about that in the <laughs> Salesforce ecosystem. You can move around as, as much as you want. So, yeah. Great. Yeah, which is brilliant. Um, so thinking about... Um, Thinking about your own career, because obviously we've got very different um, backgrounds, haven't we? And and have now kind of come into that Salesforce space. Mm -hmm. What do you think, um, what kind of do you think is kind of the biggest draws to doing that transition into the Salesforce ecosystem? You know, I think for me, I, I like because I feel like I am not that stagnant learner. I've always been adding on to my learning. So what I what has really drawn me into Salesforce is number one, it's everywhere. So I, I like that it's in really entrenched everywhere. Um, so, you know, you'll find it in all different industries, like all different organizations, big or small or no matter where you are. And I just think that um the skills that you gain from learning and employing and using Salesforce are really valuable just out in the in the in the working world, you know, um, to have those skills. It makes you think like a problem solver. It makes you analyze um, it. It helps you to understand, you know, businesses and organizations better. Um, so I feel like you gain a, a really deep understanding um, by learning Salesforce and knowing Salesforce. So I think what has, has drawn me to this industry is just the opportunity and the fact that it's everywhere um, and the growth, the room for growth in, in this industry. And, and it's relevant. You know, I wanted to be in this industry because obviously technology is a, you know, a hot market to be into. And Salesforce is one of the you know best products out there. So that's kind of what you know, drew me in to this. And, you know, Super Moms has a great mission and that drew me to Super Moms, you know, wanting to work with Super Moms because of the fact that they wanted to help people, you know, transition into Salesforce. And I like that mission, especially people just like everybody out there who are career shifters, who maybe are, um, have stayed at home for a while or have been out of their career for a while. Salesforce is for anybody. Anybody can get into Salesforce. And that's what I like about it, too, is that you don't need that technical background. Um, You don't have to know how to code. Um, You can come from healthcare. You can come from education. You can come from any sector and learn and get into Salesforce. So that was important to me. I think the mission of it, um, of Salesforce and of Supermoms overall, really is what drew me in for sure. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? Um, I think we do have, we do have a question here. <laughs> it's I funny because I keep seeing everybody talking about Melanie, but we don't see anything that Melanie's posting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I see everybody else, but they're talking to Melanie, but I don't see Melanie's uh, comments, which is, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll probably see those when we come off of live right. potentially. Right. Um, so I'm arranged already. And I got uh, I got scheduled my Salesforce administrator exam soon, which is very exciting. Congratulations yeah. for getting that mm-hmm. um, exam sort of set in stone because that's always a big thing. So we wish you luck with that. I wonder if it is possible to get a job through your website also. OK, so. Mel, I think, is here actually yeah. on the live. Um, she is part, she is the manager of our, our recruitment team mm-hmm. and heads up our recruitment team here in the UK. Um, so certainly if you go through to our website, it's very easy to be able to go through and register for our recruitment um, team. So I would definitely recommend reaching out and, and uploading your CV for Mel and her team to review and mm-hmm. help and assist with that. So um, we can actually drop a link in here as well, I think, um, probably. Mm-hmm. So we can do that for you. Yeah, let me see if I can grab it. Just kind of the where you need to go. Um back let me drop and i always congratulate people who are self-studying because i Mm -hmm. think it's you know 
we know, I know kind of from going in um, to Trailhead, um, I know that, you know, the, a couple here are obviously saying about, you know, the kids obviously enjoying that. And I think definitely if you, in you know, if you enjoy that kind of reading and kind of getting that instant gratification. But for me, I find it quite text heavy. So yes. I kind of, I'm definitely more a hands-on person. I like to get in and make mistakes and find things don't work and then find a solution and, and those sorts of things. So I'm, um, you know, congratulations for doing that self-study piece. Um, that's I think it's no surprise thing. that the younger ones, <clears throat> the teenagers like it, right? Because it's gamified. Yeah. <laughs> I yes. was like, you know, the Salesforce learning is definitely gamified. They've perfected that. You know, you get the stickers yeah. and badges and there's characters. Um, and so that's right up their alley, you know, but you're exactly yeah. right. I think it's it's a challenge sometimes to, to go through and learn on your own and, and get to that status. I'm the same way. I'm kind of a blended learner. I like reading through, but I also like taking action and, and practicing and I'm visual. So I need to have a lot of different, you know, inputs for, for my learning style. So that doesn't always work for me. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can get through that on your own, uh, that's, you know, that's great. You've, you've mastered your learning style, I guess, so to speak. And that's what works for you. Yeah, but definitely reach out to the re recruitment team when you're ready to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can't see any other questions. Can't see no. any other questions here. Um, but certainly we can. Um, I think Diane was going to pop into doing all of the all of the popping into the comments today, Diane. Mm -hmm. I think Diane was going to pop in our five day career challenge because, as we said right at the beginning, you know that kind of reflection piece, that kind of making sure that what if you are looking to do that can, career transition, that it is the right next step for you then our five-day career challenge can really help with that, can't it? To kind of mm -hmm. just see what that ecosystem is like, what Super Moms is all about, and whether that could potentially be the right fit for you. A super kids option. <laughs> um, you know, interesting en enough, we have um, a learner that actually was just in the uh, class in the February class, I believe, or maybe he was November. Um, but he, a, a young adult, um, so I think he was 20, maybe probably one of our younger ones that came through and he is doing the Salesforce admin training as well as our consultancy class and doing fabulous. So, um, it's not, you know, too young to also be a part of, you know, the program mm -hmm. and a super moms, because again, if you feel like you need that extra support to do that, then, um, you know, super moms kind of provides you with that really, good blend right of learning style so you do you're doing a lot of work on your own but you're also having that benefit of being able to see a live presentation and being able to talk to a mentor i think that's one of the aspects of the super moms program that i like the most and i think is most beneficial is that you actually have a mentor you know you have your one-on-one -on -one mentor that is there with you throughout the course uh that someone that is working in the Salesforce ecosystem yeah. and can really help you relate to, you know, how is this learning translating into the real world, into the Salesforce ecosystem? It can help answer questions about careers and can help, you know, you to understand the material that they're making sure that you're mastering that material as you're going on. So um, that's just a great part of our, our super moms training. Um, and again, you know, it, uh, young adults, anybody from young adults, mm -hmm. to you know, older, mature individuals, right, um, yeah. can benefit yeah. from that training. So what, <laughs> my son just said he likes trailhead, but wants to be on a course like Super Moms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a great course. And it's also cool because when you're at, what I like about Super Moms too, is you're part of like a cohort of people. Um, and if you've ever seen some of our um, you know, we, we always post or, you know, um, up on our LinkedIn, our pictures, of our uh, super moms and our trainees that are in our classes, they're smiling faces when they first start. And if you have ever seen that, uh, see, have seen that before on LinkedIn, you can appreciate it because everybody is ready to start and get going. And it's nice that you're part of a class and you have peers that you can talk to and you can share with. I like that you're not on your own. You don't feel like you're going yeah. through this on your own. I mean, the UK, you had norm, you know, you had almost 40 people, right, going through the the last class and um, in the US too. But we keep it still small enough that you feel like you're getting that support. So, um, but just having those peers around you is invaluable, really. Yeah. 
it's and the important. networking opportunities that that brings right yeah. for somebody that's actually just starting out in their career you know to have the technical ability and to start mm -hmm. to then be taking those very first steps in their career it's actually that networking opportunity and building those relationships, isn't it? Because actually mm -hmm. further down your career, when you've got a whole cohort of people or a whole support network, you never know where those opportunities then might come to fruition later on down the line, right? Right, exactly. Um, that is so important, um, having that networking. And the nice thing about super moms is that, well, number one, we have over 900 people that we have trained worldwide right now. They're across the globe, which is great. And also, so you're instantly in that network of, of individuals, but you just get to know and people within your, you know, just in your cohort that you can, again, network amongst your mentor is there to help you. Um, you know, you have live work experience that you do with super moms. So you'll have a project manager or an administrator that you're going to be working with. So those are more networking opportunities. So as soon as you join the super moms program, you're really kind of dialed into our networking from day one, you know, so that is the best part about it as well. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's key, isn't it? And to, mm -hmm. to be able to build that throughout your journey is also important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To make sure that you've got those opportunities at the end. So a hundred percent, your network is amazing. Mm -hmm. We are proud of our network and our community, aren't we? Because, right. you know, you can go and see people's success, but they are really good drivers for people who are just starting out or just taking those first steps. If you know that somebody's already walked those steps before you, it makes it far easier, doesn't it, for you to think, mm -hmm. oh, that could be me. You know, right. I could go and do that. So we need those people, you know, but our, our network is brilliant. They're so welcoming, aren't they? And I, I kind of think that... The whole Salesforce network, you know, and Oana, it is amazing, isn't it? It really mm -hmm. is kind of does have that community feel, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's, you know, that's really important to help, you know, to help people along and, um, you know, to get that support. I'm busy, sorry, uh, putting in some links. I wanted to make sure that everybody knew we put in our, um, I put in my calendar, our calendar links so that right. if you want to book an appointment or I know uh, someone had said, uh, talked about one of their friends that was maybe hoping to get into the Salesforce ecosystem into training. If they want to talk to to us, uh, one of us, Maria Mar or myself about what the training options are. And really we're here to kind of consult with you and kind of, and give you some advice we have no problem giving you some, you know, career advice about what you should do and really seeing if our training program or even shifting into that career is a good step for you. So we're happy to do that. So please, you know, book in a time with us right on our calendar. We'd love to talk mm -hmm. to you. And I also put there the link to some of our case studies. I love those. You know, we have mm -hmm. some yeah. new case studies up on our website. Um, and it's exactly like Maria was saying, you can relate to people that have gone through this training experience and have shifted their careers. Find, you'll find somebody in our case studies that looks exactly like you as far as what their, you know, what their experience has been, where they've come from. So, you know, take a look at those and read through some of those. And it's really inspirational um, to find out that, you know, you're not the only one, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and you can relate to their experience. I get that all the time. You know, when I talk to people there, you know, sometimes one of the questions they ask is, you know, am I the first one you've had that, you know, has come from, you know, retail, something like that? Nope, you're absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I think you see people come from every industry, real estate, as you were just saying, you know, from every industry has come from every industry and we have success stories about them so you're you're not the only one we've seen them all so yeah and it's all about those transferable skills isn't it mm -hmm. when you're looking for that career transition mm -hmm. you can you know there are generally common themes um throughout your career history um mm -hmm. that you can match and mirror into other into other careers to to be able to help that transition and and we certainly that's why we love speaking to people diane and i because you know we get to kind of unpick what those transferable skills mm -hmm. are and how that might translate into that salesforce ecosystem um and certainly i don't know about you but sort of when i speak to somebody 
we generally have about 30 minutes, but sometimes after speaking to somebody for sort of 10, 15 minutes, you kind of think you would be a fantastic consultant or right. you know, right. and you can almost see their path. Um, but it can be a bit muddy, can't it? When you're first looking of kind of going, how can I even go and do this? Right. Um, but there are definitely kind of common themes um, mm-hmm. and transferable mm-hmm. skills that, that will help you transition. Definitely. Right. We can, you know, that's kind of our job is to help to recognize that in yourself is to help, you know, point those out um, because we, you know, again, we have the experience to be able to, to look back and um, know, you know, what you need, right. To move forward and kind of give you that advice. And so sometimes it's hard to see if you're having trouble kind of self-reflecting on your own, uh, it might just be that you need to have a quick, you know, discussion with one of us or a consultation and we can talk to you and help you unpick that and analyze that. And we like to do that. <laughs> We're very analytical in our approach. We like to, you know, pick that apart and and look at you as a person and and kind of decide, OK, I think these are some great action steps for you. What are we going to do now? So we give you your options that you might have. And if that includes, you know, our Super Moms training course, that's great. We can tell you, you know, if you'd be a good fit for the training course and if it would work out for you and in, in the direction that you want to go in. So so we love that part. For sure. That's the best part, isn't it? One of the best <laughs> parts of our role, getting to talk it to is. so many different people. And I always, I mean, I'm always inspired by our alumni and our trainees that go on to have amazing success within the ecosystem. But I'm just as inspired by the people that we get to talk to that we don't know anything about, because I think it's really brave. Some people, Mm -hmm. you know, it takes a lot to actually book in that call with us to kind of even start to explore that next step. So that's inspiring, you know, that you're kind of starting to take those and look and and kind of think, is this right? Because even if it isn't right, that will generally trigger something else mm-hmm. where you start to go and explore, you know, other things. And I think that that's always really exciting. So, you know, we do get inspired, you know, daily, don't we, by different people that we that we get to chat to. So it's certainly the best part of my role. What's that saying? I love that saying that you can say, say it a couple different ways, but you, you miss 100% of the opportunities that you don't take or you miss yeah. 100% of the chances that you don't take. So if that's something to think about today, um, sometimes the hardest part is taking that first step, um, but you miss that, right? If you don't yeah. do it, you miss it. So try not to be that way. Just, you know, um, take that first step. And and even, you know, just reaching out to us is a good first step um, because, and you'll feel better about yourself because you actually took that step to talk to somebody um, about your goals, about your, you know, what you want to do. And, you know, we can talk it through and you might decide, you know, this might be a good direction for you or or it might not be a good direction for you, but at least you took that first step. (laughs) So don't let that be your barrier, you know, don't let that, um, you know, be the barrier to you moving on, you know, take that first step. So. Absolutely. Well, great. And if there's any other questions, like I said, we can come back um, to the comments later and answer your questions. Feel free to reach out to us. And um, with any comments or questions that you have, um, all the links are in there. So make sure you you visit our website. And if you need to get a hold of one of us, um, you can book there right on our calendar. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you so much for adding all the links in, Diane. You've been busy beavering away behind. So thank you. (laughs) Yes, I know. I try. I'm just sat here chatting. That's all. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. But thanks everybody for being here and have a great day. And Take we'll care. be back again next week. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.